Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in today's episode we will look at a lot of things on orchid care. It's blooming and the basic difference between a dendrobium and a phalaenopsis orchid. And also talk about a particular disease that is common in orchids. So first let us look at how to differentiate between the phalaenopsis and dendrobium orchids. So they can primarily be distinguished by looking at their leaves and flowers. The dendrobium petals are more flat and flowery and if you look at the middle of the flower, it looks like a flying pigeon turning its back. But the phalaenopsis living up to its name of moth orchid looks like a moth with eyes and tentacle shaped lower petals. The leaves of the dendrobium is longer and has more leaves compared to the phalaenopsis which has wider leaves that arise immediately at the base of the plant. The stems of the phalaenopsis will not grow tall like the dendrobium. So these two types of orchids like different light conditions. The dendrobium requires more sunlight than the phalaenopsis. The phal can be grown indoors in a brightly lit room and the den grows well outdoors under shady conditions. I have kept my phal in a north facing side of my terrace under a chaja shade and the den is exposed to more sunlight and is exposed to the southwest location with some morning shade in the balcony. But remember, my city has moderate weather, hence I can afford to do this, but you need to tweak it as per your climatic conditions. As a thumb rule, if you live in a very desert-like region, then keeping them outside, exposing them to sunlight is bad. If you have any further questions on this, then write to me in the comment section. Remember that these plants are not cold tolerant at all and any temperature below 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit is not advisable to grow outdoors. Blooming These orchids can bloom two or three times a year and winters is a special time for these orchids because they love lower temperature in the night for the blooming to be triggered. So a weather like Bangalore's is ideal for these orchids. Except for the harsh, harsh summers, I've seen this blooming almost all the time because the blooms last for more than a month or two. It gives you the feeling of a perpetual blooming and that's why I love this plant and it is one of my prized possessions. Now let us look at what you all are waiting for. Blooming. How to get good blooming from your orchids. So helping your orchids bloom is very easy. Just follow these steps and I'm sure most of you can easily help your orchids grow in a very organic way. So the first thing you have to look at is fertilizing. I fertilize my orchids only with banana peels for the potassium and also use kitchen waste and lots of it every week. Using used tea leaves or coffee grounds every week, especially before the blooming sets in, is highly recommended. Now you can go over and above this and use DAP fertilizers which can give you instant results but DAP cannot be used every week like how we use organic fertilizers. See I believe some amount of chemical fertilizers can be used in conjunction with organic waste because however much we hate chemicals we ourselves end up taking up those occasional antibiotics once in a while. So as far as I'm concerned that's okay. But don't completely go chemical is what I would like to say. Any potassium and phosphorus rich fertilizer would do. Limit nitrogen rich fertilizers because we grow orchids for their flowers and not for their leaves. But I don't use any chemicals and I get these results. So for those who are organic purists, you have something to be happy about. Compost is also excellent to give the plant a balanced boost of nutrients. Watering is also very essential, so make sure you water the plants depending on where it is located. If you are exposing the orchid to more sunlight, then watering has to be increased because remember, the potting mix is super draining. But if you are growing these plants indoors, give the plants some time to dry off before you water it next. In conjunction with watering, let us also talk about some diseases that affect the orchids. Now, depending on how you water the plant, the plant can get affected with some fungal diseases like botrytis, which cause these black spots on the blooms. This is because this plant was exposed to incessant rain this year and that has perhaps led to this disease. So just be careful with your watering because prevention is better than cure.
I don't think neem oil pesticide would work wonders on this disease, but I'll let it be. Just make sure you don't mulch your plants or other orchids with the leaves or flowers of this affected plant. Fungal spots on the leaves as well is mostly due to watering, so please don't water the leaves or the flowers, only water their roots and that will do. Spraying water can increase humidity, but on the downside, it can lead to these fungal diseases. So be careful. Growing the orchids close to other plants is enough to increase the humidity. I have never sprayed my orchids till date. Next, we'll talk about pruning. Pruning is also important and it is different for these two orchids. In the den, you can remove the old flower stalk when the flower stalk turns yellow like this. And there is no point putting it back in the soil, nothing will grow from it. But in the fall, you should not prune the flower stalk after the blooms have withered away because they have a tendency of growing new flower stalks like this from the old one, unlike the dendrobium. So once you see the stalk turning a deep yellow, that is when you prune the stalk. You can watch the video on pruning in the link above or wait for next year and I will put up a better pruning video. Now let us also touch upon why I am using a lot of these non-porous pots. So a lot of people must be wondering on how am I able to grow orchids in such pots with no holes. It is possible to grow this in such containers but a pot with holes is always helpful because this is an epiphytic plant which means that the roots don't like being in soil and absorbs air and moisture from the atmosphere. See, that is why these den roots have started growing on top of each other, thereby giving me the chance of getting more orchid plants for propagation. So folks, follow these simple steps of good sunlight, ample water and heavy feeding with organic matter and your orchids will bloom like there is no tomorrow. So with this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore. And if you liked this episode, then please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook for further updates. The links are given below. So until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.